So for our final lesson for Module 5, we're going to look at regeneration applied to the Rankine cycle. So a regenerative cycle uses feed water heaters. These can be of a couple of types, either a closed or an open feed water heater. Now this is going to have a huge advantage in terms of thermal efficiency because I can much more closely approximate the Carnot efficiency. <clears throat> but the analysis is going to be more challenging. Now an open feed water heater is the least expensive. Basically I'm going to take streams at different energy levels and mix them to preheat the material going into the boiler. <clears throat> that is going to require analysis with multiple streams and it does require that I get the pressures to match of all of those streams. There's also a closed feed water heater, which is not going to have the fluids mixing. It's going to be more like working a heat exchanger problem in the middle of everything else. So this is a sample of an open feed water heater system. I begin with that saturated liquid water. I pump it to a pressure, but I'm going to pump it to an intermediate pressure this time. I'm going to mix that with some already hot stuff that's coming out of the turbine. So it's going to now have a higher energy at this intermediate pressure. I'll pump it the rest of the way to the very high pressure, boil it, send it to the turbine, get most of the work out of that fluid, send part of it back over to preheat the other material, and the rest of it let continue through the turbine as normal and send it into the condenser where it can become a liquid again and start the whole cycle over again. So notice that the key thing here is that we're going to have one stream into the turbine and two streams out of the turbine at different conditions. And I'm going to have this device here, the open feed water heater, where I will be bringing two streams in and one stream out. So to do the analysis, I'm going to have to include mass balances as well as the energy balances. So, okay, the energy going through this portion, or the energy, the material, is all of the fluid. And just a little bit of it is going to go through here with a little bit of the other, or the rest of it, going through here. Okay? So flow rates M1, M2, and M7 will all be the same. M3, M4, and M5 will all be the same. M5 has to equal 6 and 7. And M3 has to equal M2 and M6. But because they're all equal, this really is the same balance twice. Now sometimes we don't know the flow rate, and we're going to be looking for just like the specific work. So in that case, the recommended technique is to just say, let's call the flow rate through the boiler 1. Not as in 1 kilogram per second or something like that, as in 100%. If I do that, then I can continue with doing the rest of the balances and treat it as if I've got a normal flow rate given. Now the work of the turbine, the energy comes in stream 5 and it leaves in stream 6 and 7. So the work produced will be M5 times H5 minus M6 H6 and M7 H7. The other place that's weird and new is the open feed water heater. Here it's a heater. I want all of the energy to just transfer to other fluids. So Q and W will both be 0 and assuming no kinetic or potential energy change is significant, then I end up with the energy in, so the mass times the H for each of the inlet streams, is equal to mass times H of the exit stream. So here is an example that would go with this. And again, I'm just going to very briefly look at this. I recommend that you really, this one for sure, pause, take a look at it very closely, look at the numbers, see if you can you know, recreate these same values. So there's going to be two pumps. The turbine's more complicated. That's going to be my network. And then 
the boiler. Okay, well, that will give me my thermal efficiency. So if you go through and do these, so the first thing I do is I calculate the work of the pumps using V delta P and then use that to calculate the enthalpy at the exit of the pump. But I just have two of those to do this time. So I've done that twice. Then go to the open feed water heater. Once I have all of the enthalpy data, go to the open feed water heater. That's the new thing. That's the part that you have to now do a new sort of balance and figure out what's the split between the streams that are bypassing the end of the turbine. So that energy balance on the open feed water heater will allow me to calculate X. I've done that, and it says that 85% of the stuff flows through the condenser, and so about 15% flows just directly into the feed water heater. Then the work for the turbine, again, if you look at this spreadsheet, you'll be able to see this more clearly, but I've taken these flow rates where I've used 100% here, 85% here, 15% here, and the those as flow rates times the enthalpies calculates the specific work in kilojoules per kilogram, the boiler heat, the condenser, the net work I've got, and I got a thermal efficiency of 11.1%. Now you can also do this with a closed feed water heater. The trick is I don't have to be so careful with the pressures, and so because they're not mixing, right? Mixers have to have exactly the same pressure, but these aren't mixing. So I can have any combination of pressures, but again, I'm going to need to do an energy balance on the feed water heater in order to calculate what the split is of the amount that goes early to the pumps, okay, or the part that goes all the way through the condenser. The last thing I wanted to talk about on the ranking cycle is how actual cycles will different, be different from the ideal cycles. Okay, in reality, there are going to be small pressure drops across that equipment. We've been saying that the pressure at the inlet and exit of the boiler and condenser will be the same. That's not correct. However, thermodynamically, it's going to make very little difference in the data. So, that is an um, assumption that is definitely wrong, but really isn't going to make any significant difference in your calculations. Okay, another assumption we make is that there's the boiler is perfectly insulated. All the heat goes directly into the fluid. The reality is there will be some heat loss from that boiler. We're going to try to insulate our equipment so that it's very minimal, but it's not going to be perfect. Actually, the pumps and turbines are going to have process efficiencies that will be less than one. Now, I can buy some fairly efficient equipment these days, and so they may be very close to one, but they may also be inexpensive, in which case they won't be so efficient, or they may be old. Okay, So I need to recall the definition of process efficiency for a pump and for a turbine. For a pump, it's the ideal divided by the actual. For a turbine, it's actual divided by ideal. Simply knowing how to relate this means that I can use these definitions to calculate what the actual exit states for that equipment is. So when I do a cycle that has actual equipment in it, I first do the calculations as if it were ideal. And then I make the corrections using process efficiencies. So here we have one, the same one we looked at before. We had, remember, a 10.2% efficiency. This is the same example we've been really badgering to death. Okay, 80% efficient pump, 85% efficient turbine. Okay, those are not wonderful, not the worst I've seen. Okay. You can also do it with pressure drop across the boiler, pressure drop across the condenser. You can add in all those kinds of things. What you're going to find, 
So I did all those. If you add in the pressure drops, it makes almost no difference. You really are not going to see the difference in those numbers. Um, yeah, so there's my calculations. I then, once I did the ideal, I then started calculating efficiencies and actual exit states. Knowing the actual exit states, then I could calculate the actual amount of heat transfer and actual amount of work. And I found that that 10.2% per, uh, efficient cycle was really only 8.3% efficient. So reality really is going to hit us hard on our thermal efficiency. Okay? So again, this is the end of the examples on power cycles. Be sure to go through the examples. I have the spreadsheet on the uh, learning management software. And take your time to go through those. Make sure that you too understand each of these different steps and how they interrelate.